Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into my running back start or sit decisions for week number 6 of the 2022 fantasy football season. Inside today's video, I'll be going in-depth into every single matchup from Thursday Night Football all the way until Monday Night Football, and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the running backs in all of those games. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you do want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNT. TSY. It is also important to note that the Detroit Lions, the Tennessee Titans, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Houston Texans are on by this week, which is going to make your decisions even harder. So if you have any questions down below in the comment section, it doesn't even have to relate to running backs. Please make sure that you ask. I love talking to you guys in the comment section. So without further ado, let's get into my week number six. Running back, start or sit decisions. We begin with this absolute snooze fest of a Thursday night football matchup. The Washington Commanders at the Chicago Bears. In this matchup, in terms of the running back position, the only RB I want to be starting is David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears. The Bears have proved one thing this season, and that is that they want to run the ball at an incredibly high clip. And whoever the starting running back is going to be in any given game is going to be given an ass load of carries. David Montgomery last week coming off the injury comes in and puts up a very solid performance. Now I'm not going to have David Montgomery ranked inside the top 12 running backs for the week, but would I be surprised at all if week number six comes to a close and David Montgomery is inside the top 12? No, because of how much they give this man the ball. Now Khalil Herbert will be given his chances during the game to touch the rock, but at the end of the day, they do really want to use just one back mainly, and that running back right now is David Montgomery as he is healthy. For the Washington Commanders, I talked a lot through the first couple of weeks of the season about how I really believed that the second Brian Robinson came back, that the Antonio Gibson hype train was going to come to a massive Holt. I was personally someone that was fading Antonio Gibson even when his ADP was falling in fantasy football drafts. And early on in the season, I looked completely wrong because Antonio Gibson was the number one running back on the team. He was seeing a decent amount of carries and receptions, and the Washington Commanders were looking really good under Carson Wentz. But the last couple of weeks, everything has kind of fallen apart. The Washington Commander's offense is much more of a disaster. And now, with Brian Robinson being healthy, he out-touched Antonio Gibson last week. I think that Antonio Gibson's value is basically decimated. Brian Robinson is going to be the guy going forward. It even came out that Antonio Gibson, now that Brian Robinson has returned, is going to be returning punts for the team, which doesn't bode well for my thoughts on Antonio Gibson because he wouldn't be returning the punts if he was the starting running back. Now, if Antonio Gibson for the start of the season was averaging four yards per carry, I would think, you know what? Maybe Antonio Gibson can fight off Brian Robinson, but he was averaging 3.3 yards per carry, basically. He doesn't look very good. I think Brian Robinson will become the guy. I think they're going to slowly ramp up his touches. So this week up against the Chicago Bears, while I do like the matchup, I'm going to stay away from both Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson, but I do think in the next couple of weeks, we will be firing up Brian Robinson with confidence. So Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson are sits, and Khalil Herbert is a sit as well, with David Montgomery being a start. Next up, we move to the start of the Sunday slate with the San Francisco 49ers at the Atlanta Falcons. In this matchup, I'm going to be firing up Jeff Wilson Jr. Now, we did see the San Francisco 49ers use Tevin Coleman last week, and this is a Tevin Coleman revenge game. You guys know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, that I am a humongous fan of revenge games. I love the revenge game narrative, and I think it is entirely possible with how much the 49ers like to run the ball that Tevin Coleman finds the end zone in this game, but... I'm not telling you to start him because I really do believe that Jeff Wilson Jr. is the guy. He looked incredibly good over the last couple of games ever since he became the starter on the team. And this Atlanta Falcons defense is soft as baby shit. So I really do expect Jeff Wilson Jr. to have a field day this week for the Atlanta Falcons. Tyler Algier as well as Caleb Huntley will be splitting the touches. 
in more positive matchups. I could talk myself into starting Tyler Algier while Cordero Patterson is injured, but up against the 49ers defense, you should definitely be looking to stay away. Next up, we move to the New England Patriots, the Patriots, the New England Patriots at the Cleveland Browns. Now, I've seen some extremely hot takes about Ramondre Stevenson, that while Damian Harris is gone, seems like Damian Harris is going to be missing some serious time, that Ramondre Stevenson is a week in and week out top five running back. I think that take is a little bit crazy. I think that's a scorching hot take. But a more reasonable take would be that, hey, without Damian Harris and with Pierre Strong behind him, Ramondre Stevenson has the upside to be a top 12 running back going forward. And that's a take that I believe in. That's a take that I think is entirely possible. This Patriots team runs the ball so effectively. The only thing that was kind of stopping Ramondre Stevenson or Damian Harris from being this stud running back is the fact that they wanted to use both of them. The fact that they were both healthy was they were kind of cannibalizing each other. They were fucking each other over. But now that it's just Ramondre Stevenson there, I know they're going to try to use Pierre Strong and these other running backs. But at the end of the day, Stevenson is the guy. He's proved to the coaches. He's proved to us, the viewers, that he is that guy. And up against the Browns defense, I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes inside of the top 12. For the Cleveland Browns, 9-inch Nicholas Chubb is a must-start running back every single week. I don't even need to go super deep into why you want to be starting Nick Chubb. The guy just looks fucking fantastic. It doesn't even matter if Kareem Hunt has a decent game because Nick Chubb is also having a big game. So I like Nick Chubb a ton up against the Patriots. Even though the Patriots defense played really good last week, it could just be that Bill Belichick has Jared Goff's number. Kareem Hunt is a starting running back every single week for me. Now, his upside is incredibly high. His floor is like 9, 10 points. He's a decent start every week. Most games, you're not going to see that huge blow-up performance because of how good Nick Chubb is. But there's always the upside that Kareem Hunt scores a touchdown or two, catches a bunch of passes, and finishes inside of the top 15 ish running backs the other running backs for the Patriots like I said Pierre Strong and friends they are going to be sits for me because I really do believe that it is Ramondre Steven season get it Ramondre Steven season very fucking funny next up we move to the New York Jumbo Jets at the Green Bay Packers now a player that I did not like this offseason was Brees Hall because I was very worried that when it came to Brees Hall that the team would take far too long to ramp up his touches. That because Michael Carter looked so good last year, that maybe he would be able to fend off Brees Hall for long enough that Brees Hall would technically have been a bust, even though towards the end of the season he was going to catch fire like he's the fucking Hunger Games book. But I was wrong about that. I knew the whole time I was fading him that the guy was incredibly talented, that was very evident out of college, his college tape is insane, but there was also a chance that the Jets are still the Jets, that, you know, they kind of messed this one up for year one, and then next year, Brees Hall is this great player, but based upon what I saw last week up against the Miami Dolphins, this Jets offense knows how to run the ball, and the Packers defense just got the shit pounded out of them. 50 Shades of Grey BDSM style by Saquon Barkley and the New York Football Giants. So I truly believe that Brees Hall is going to be getting an ass load of carries here. I think Brees Hall should be considered as a potential top 12 running back rest of season. For the Packers, they have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are alike Chubb and Kareem Hunt because they are parasitic to each other. If you took Aaron Jones, put him on the Packers, kicked A.J. Dillon, sent him on a rocket across the United States, put him on a different team, then A.J. Dillon probably could be in some situations a top 12 running back, the lead back on a team, while Aaron Jones is a top 12 running back, the lead back on the Packers. But that's not the situation we're in. We're not in fucking imaginary land where I get to make the rules. We're in the NFL. And right now, this version of the NFL has two great running backs on the same team that cannibalize each other. Now, I continue to stand tall, unlike Kyler Murray, on the fact that I believe that Aaron Jones is the dude. Aaron Jones is the better running back. 
but there's going to be games where A.J. Dillon outscores Aaron Jones. There's also going to be games where both of them don't really do much. Now, the Jets' defense got ran on by Raheem Mostert. The Jets' defense didn't look the best, in my opinion, against the Dolphins. I know. Scoreboard, Nick. Your team got absolutely fucked by the Jets. I know. We lost the game, but the defense wasn't uber impressive to me. They were playing up against Skylar Thompson. So I think the Packers, this kind of seems like a game where the Jets are riding so high. They are riding on a hot streak right now. They're like, holy shit, we're winning these games. And now the reality is going to hit them. Mr. A.A. Ron Rodgers is going to hit them with the 619 Rey Mysterio. I think that the Packers blow the back out of the Jets in this game. I could be wrong. A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones should be decent. I like Aaron Jones more. But these guys are really starting to worry me because neither of them have really had that crazy peak performance except for week one A.J. Dillon and then that primetime game for Aaron Jones. I'm going to be sitting down Michael Carter because I strongly believe Brees Hall's the guy. Michael Carter got lucky. He scored those touchdowns. He hit the waddle in the end zone like a scumbag. I genuinely believe that this is Brees Hall's backfield. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Indianapolis Colts. And here we have a running back controversy. The season starts. I'm riding high on Travis Etienne. I'm thinking, oh my God, the pass catching upside. James Robinson is coming off of this injury. So late in the season, Etienne's going to be the guy. Maybe Robinson takes over later in the season, but at least for now, for the start of the season, it's a no brainer. Etienne's fully healthy. He's going to be the guy. And then we see James Robinson be the guy and look dominant the first couple weeks of the season but the last two weeks of the season weeks four and week five Travis Etienne is getting more snaps so while I'm still fine playing both of them in an ideal scenario where my running back where I don't have to start James Robinson and Travis Etienne I don't really want to be starting either of them and I still think Robinson's the better back but if Etienne keeps seeing more usage then as the weeks go on we're to see Robinson drop from a start to a sit I want to see ETN stay in the start column. The Colts defense hasn't been very good. And one of those things that I always like to say is that while the Jaguars look so good to start the season, the Jaguars are still the Jaguars. Despite looking so good for the first couple of games, Doug Pearson turning shit around, there's still going to be those games where the Jaguars are still the Jaguars. So... James Robinson and Travis Etienne are both start worthy, but if I'm being honest with you, I would rather watch this battle from fucking afar, like with a 10 feet pole in between us, so I could see what happens before I have to really throw them out there to the dogs. I'm going to have to play James Robinson in the leagues I have him in because I'm in my deep 14 team league, so I'm kind of just shit out of luck and I got to play him. I still think he's a decent start, but I mean, this thing is starting to look like it's going to play out that Etienne is going to be the guy. I'm just being honest. Jonathan Taylor, if he plays, you're going to start him. If he doesn't play, then you're going to sit him. If he doesn't play and Naheem Hines plays, then you're going to play Naheem Hines. But Naheem Hines got eviscerated, um, sadly, early on in that game. Uh, Thursday Night Football appears to be fucking cursed at this point, Tua, and then Naheem Hines the next week. I think that if Naheem Hines plays and Jonathan Taylor doesn't play, I'm playing Naheem Hines. But if JT and Naheem Hines don't play, I don't really think I want to roll out Deion Jackson, if I'm being honest with you. But based upon what I know from last week, if this game was played on Sunday, the Thursday night football game that was awful between the Broncos country let's ride and the Indianapolis Colts, if that game was on Sunday, it seemed like JT was going to play. So I assume Jonathan Taylor plays this week up against the Jags. Next up, we got the Minnesota Vikings at the Miami Dolphins. This game is very hard to assess as I'm recording this on Tuesday. By Wednesday, tomorrow, we are going to have a much better idea on who the starting quarterback is going to be for the Dolphins. It seems like, in my opinion, it's going to be Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy Tugs, who got hit and wobbled when he got up. Now, I understand. Nick, you're a Dolphins fan. You're biased. I don't think so. Anyone go back and watch that clip. Did you see Teddy stumble? I, I didn't see it. I think the NFL... Fist in the Dolphins a little bit, sticking it right in the blowhole. But at the end of the day here, while I don't know who the quarterback's going to be, obviously I hope it's Teddy. If Tua clears, which is still possible, concussion protocol, we're probably going to know better on Wednesday. It'll seem a little more clear. Thursday, it'll be crystal clear on who the guy's going to be. But if Tua somehow plays, then that's even better for the Dolphins. This matchup against the Vikings winnable with Teddy. I don't think we stand a single chance 
uh, with Skylar Thompson under center. Even so, though, Raheem Mostert rushed for 100 yards with Skylar Thompson. It really does seem like Mostert's the guy. Chase Edmonds just keeps fucking dropping passes. Gets the ball thrown to him. The guy fucking closes his eyes, pretends to be Stevie Wonder. He can't see anything, John Cena style, and he drops the ball. Um, how many times in a row is it going to happen until Raheem Mostert takes over? And the answer is it's happened too many times, and Raheem Mostert's the guy. Ran for 100 yards last week. Very impressive for him up against the Vikings. I think he's a decent running back, back-end RB2 kind of starter. Closer to an RB3, so like running back 25-ish reigns, but I do think he's a decent start. Dalvin Cook finally has a good game last week for the Minnesota Vikings for weeks. It was like, wow, I drafted this motherfucker in the first round and he's not really doing anything. Like, again, he wasn't really just screwing you over and just playing terrible, but when you drafted Dalvin Cook, you definitely expected more than what you saw through the start of the season. Last week, he played amazing. Hopefully, we continue to see that role for Dalvin Cook. Alexander Madison is not useful at all unless Dalvin Cook is hurt. Knock on wood, we don't root for injuries. And again, we just talked about Chase Edmonds. That guy is a fucking disaster. Next up, we move to the Cincinnati Bungles at the New Orleans Saints. But before we break down the Bengals at the Saints, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends, our sponsor of today's video over at the, you've seen them on the screen the whole entire video, over at Underdog Fantasy. Are your best ball teams already cooked? Well, head on over to Underdog Fantasy to resurrect them with their week six through week 17 best ball tournament. The entry fee is only $10 with $500,000 in total prizes and $100,000 going to first place. All you got to do is draft your team and that's it. That's my favorite part about underdog. You get the most fun part, which is drafting, and then you don't have to worry about setting your lineup. You don't have to worry about making trades because there's no trades, there's no setting your lineup, and there is no waiver wire. You don't have to sit up on Tuesday night doing waivers. Underdog will automatically at the end of the week insert the players in that are your highest scores at the end of the week. So it takes the most fun part about fantasy, eliminates all the annoying things. Like imagine you didn't start Alvin Kamara last week and you accidentally started Mark Ingram or something because you forgot to check. You don't have to worry about that because they automatically put the correct players into your lineup every single week. This best ball resurrection tournament is only around 50% full right now. Today's Tuesday at night. It is 7.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as I'm talking right now, which means that there's a chance that there is overlay. So make sure you guys check that out. Again, I'm not saying that it's guaranteed to be overlay, but there might be overlay, so make sure you guys check that out. And if you use promo code STOCASTIC, S-T-O-K-A-S-T-I-C, you get a $100 first match deposit bonus. So you deposit $100, they gift you an additional $100, which is 10 free entries into the Best Ball Resurrection Tournament. So make sure that you guys check that out. For the Bengals at the Saints back into things, you're going to be starting Joe Mixon and Alvin Kamara. These guys are both no-brainer running backs. Now, even though... Taysom Hill, who needs to be investigated by the government into why this motherfucker is ruining fantasy football, even though that man took the defense last week of the Seattle Seahawks, took them out back, and fucked them relentlessly into the night in a garbage can, Alvin Kamara still had a good game, even though Taysom Hill was fucking feasting like he was at medieval times, watching those night guys fucking swing their swords and you eat one of those huge turkey legs. Or maybe... Another analogy here would be like on uh, Thanksgiving when you see the football players eat the huge turkey leg. That's the type of feast that Taysom Hill had with some uh, mead. Is that what it's called? That cool old honey wine thing? Whatever. You know, back to actual purpose of the video. Alvin Kamara still had a good game even though Taysom Hill sucked or sucked the life out of him, basically. Um, we also see the Red Rifle be the starting quarterback, Andy Dalton. I'm not sure if Jameis will be back, so that's even better for Andy Dalton, or Andy Dalton is even better for Alvin Kamara. Joe Mixon, despite the fact that he hasn't been playing the best, um, he's still really good for fantasy, and the Bengals' offense does look pretty good, so I like Joe Mixon in this spot. Samaj P. Ryan's a backup, and so is Mark Ingram, so they are going to be sits. Next up, we move to the Baltimore Ravens at the New York Football Giants. J.K. Dobbins. Was on a heater, not last week, the week prior. The guy comes back, scores two tugs, looks great. Last week, and eh, not so much, but I'm not fucking telling you guys that this guy is a dumpster fire, that there are things that are going wrong. It was a primetime game. The primetime games have been shite all season long. So J.K. Dobbins has a bad game. It is what it is. So J.K. Dobbins up against the Giants. I'm going to start him. I don't think Gus Edwards is going to return yet. He did come off of the IR, but they still have to activate him. 
But let me tell you, once the Gus bus comes back, I am kind of worried that he's going to vulture J.K. Dobbins a bunch. Now, again, I'm not saying that's a lock, but there is a, obviously, there's a chance that that could happen. Saquon Barkley of the Giants. This guy gets hurt during the game, comes back, puts the team on his goddamn back. Saquon Barkley has been the nuts for fantasy football this year. The guy's ADP was plummeting down to the deep depths of the fucking ocean, and yet the guy is amazing. The Ravens' defense has been no bueno. Saquon Barkley and this Giants team, this Giants team is looking fucking fantastic. Even though the players aren't the best, besides like Saquon Barkley, the team is just playing well under Brian Dable. So I like Saquon Barkley a ton in this matchup, but you already like Saquon Barkley because the guy's already been amazing all season long. Mike Davis and Matt Burita are sits because they are the backups. Next up, we move to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uncle Leonard Fournette. Now, after that primetime game with the Chiefs, people started to get their panties in a bunch. They start thinking, oh my God, Nick, um, what do we do with Leonard Fournette? Uh, is Leonard Fournette gonna, gonna, gonna just be shit? Is he, has he fucked us over, Nick? And I said, don't worry. Don't worry, Uncle Lenny. He's still that dude. He's still that guy. Rashad White is still an afterthought. I know he had that one good game against the Chiefs, but he's not that guy, pal. Trust me, Leonard Fournette is the guy. But yet, People still panic. Leonard Fournette goes off, goes crazy up against the Atlanta Falcons defense. Shocking to anyone. It should not have been, but I'm sure there were some people that were shocked. Leonard Fournette had a great game. This week, he gets the Steelers defense. The Buffalo Bills just ran train, an absolute train on the Steelers defense. The Steelers defense is not the same without TJ Watt. This Steelers defense is hot ass. And I'm not meaning like a hot ass like Mia Malkova or something. I'm talking about hot ass like hot fucking garbage. This defense is dog shit. This defense is awful without TJ Watt. So I think Leonard Fournette is going to go crazy. Najee Harris has been going the opposite of crazy. He's been going instead of like what like hot sauce, he's going mild. Najee Harris hasn't done shit. Everyone, it seemed like a lot of fantasy analysts were fading Najee Harris. And I was like, you know what? Everyone's kind of fading Najee Harris. But I think since everyone's fading him, maybe they're not looking at this correctly. Like, maybe he is good. So I was like, fuck it. You know what? We're going to go with Najee Harris. I thought he was good. Uh, I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, he's going up against the Bucks this week. Yikes. Um, so... Not the best start, but you probably have to start him in most scenarios. And they're even talking about Jalen Warren seeing more touches. Uh, Najee Harris might, uh, right now he's a bust. He, he probably is going to end up being a big, fat bust. Rashad White, again, Leonard Fournette. People were kind of hyping up Rashad White, but in reality, the guy's just fucking handcuffed. Jalen Warren, we're going to see more touches, but probably not start worthy. Next up, we got the Carolina Panthers at the LA Rams, and let's keep this short and sweet. Now, there were some rumors yesterday that I read that Christian McCaffrey, there was rumors, there's talk about the Bills wanting to trade for Christian McCaffrey. Now, if that happens, uh, the, the Super Bowl might as well be awarded to the Buffalo Bills. But it would be really funny because the Bills, they have these running backs that are good. They just don't give the ball to the running backs. It would be fucking hilarious if they trade. I don't know what you would trade for Christian McCaffrey. I don't know what the fuck the Panthers need. They just fired Matt Rule. So imagine a first-round pick. I don't know what Christian McCaffrey's worth. So I'm just... Saying something off the top of my head. Be like, people, fucking internet GMs in the comment will be like, Nick, you dumb motherfucker, he's actually worth this and this. Whatever, okay? For instance, one first round draft pick and fucking a half-eaten bag of potato chips for him. What, what would be funny, the funniest outcome, it wouldn't be funny for fantasy, is if the Bills trade for him and they still just throw the ball a million times, they don't even give him the ball. That would be very funny. But Christian McCaffrey's still on the Panthers. We always see these crazy news blurbs of, oh, this team's going to trade for this player. Every year, it's the same shit and nothing happens. The NFL trade deadline is the least exciting thing ever. The NBA trade deadline is fucking crazy. There's news all over. There's players getting traded everywhere. In the NFL, nothing happens. <laughs> so I don't think Christian McCaffrey is going to get traded. And now we just went on this long diatribe after saying we're going to keep things short. Christian McCaffrey is an obvious start, even up against the Rams defense. Deonta Foreman is his handcuff. I would not start him. Cam Akers and Darrell Henderson. So you want to know how you slow your offense down? You hand the ball to Cam Akers because this guy runs like he's running in fucking quicksand. He He's running like he's trying to get out of one of those. Have you ever played on the sand map? I don't know the name of it. 
off the top of my head, but Mario Kart Double Dash, I remember this game from a ki being a kid, and you go in the thing, and it sucks you backwards, and you're trying to fucking drive your cart out of there, Toad and fucking Donkey Kong are trying to get their way out of there. That's what it feels like you're, when you're watching Cam Makers. It's like the guy is just running in fucking slow motion. Um, Cam Makers sucks ass. Um, they still want Cam Makers to be the guy. So eventually, Cam Makers will be start worthy. Maybe this is the game, right? The Panthers' defense hasn't been the best. Um, Matt Rule got fired. Yikes, this, this team's a disaster. Darrell Henderson's a sit as well. Next up, we move to the Arizona Cardinals at the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm going to continue to just give the Seahawks the verbal gawk, gawk, nine fucking thousand. Seattle Seahawks offense has been uber impressive. I was wrong. I bet you you guys were wrong too. I don't, now, maybe I'm wrong. Nick, I was actually really right about the Seahawks. Okay, <laughs> hands up. You were right too. But I think most people thought the Seahawks were going to be absolute dog shit without Russell Wilson. Everyone thought, oh my God, Pete Carroll's the reason why this team's fucked up. But Pete Carroll looks like, like on the sideline, you ever see this motherfucker? Now, obviously he's chomp, chomping some fucking gum down at maximum velocity, but he's also like, he looks like he's old, right? He's an old man, but he looks like he's got some crazy energy in him. It's like Russell Wilson sucked the energy out of him and like he was like fucking Emperor Palpatine or some shit and now he's back. It's amazing. It's amazing to see the Seahawks. Sadly, my guy, Rashad Penny, got hurt. And he had season-ending injury uh, surgery today. Uh, he got the season-ending injury on Sunday. Sucks for Penny. Um, I like him. Tough scene. But now Kenneth Walker's like the hottest waiver wire pickup. There's a lot of debate on Twitter. People talking about, oh, your, your fucking leagues are soft if people don't own Kenneth Walker. Well, not everyone plays with a million people who are super sharp. Kenneth Walker also, like, he wasn't really doing anything. He didn't really look that good until last week. Um, he's a hot waiver wire pickup. He's got to be spending a lot of fab on. He gets the Cardinals this week. You're going to fire him up, assuming that he's the guy. Now, there's always the chance that, wiki wiki, DJ, J G DJ Dallas, D -D -D DJ Cali, ends up going in and playing well, but I don't really think that's the case. They drafted Walker high for a reason, and that's to use him. James Conner's health up in the air right now. Very confusing on if James Conner's going to come back or not. So if Conner plays, you got to play him because the Seahawks defense isn't very good. You know, Benjamin, if Conner doesn't play, you insert him. He's looked pretty good in that backup role. But if Conner's in, I don't think you want to be rolling out. You know, Benjamin, unless you're in a deep league and, you know, maybe James Conner re-aggravates his injury and then, you know, Benjamin has a good game. Next up, we got the matchup of the week, obviously. Duh. The Bills versus the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. Now, Devin Singletary is a start. He's one of those bottom of the barrel starts. You could basically call him instead of a start, a fucking shark because this guy pisses me off because the Bills, Cleveland steamer, they torch, they absolutely destroy, build, destroy the fucking defense of the Steelers. And yet, Devin Singletary is just chilling there doing nothing. Doing nothing because they don't run the ball. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh, Devin Singletary could have a big game. He could. He could always have a big game because of how good the Bills are, but he never does. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has his first down game of the year last week. I'm sure the people that were preying on his downfall on Monday night um, wanted Clyde Edwards-Hilaire to fail. Uh, he had a bad game. It is what it is. Uh, obviously, if you started him, your team probably got pushed down harder than Devontae Adams pushed down that cameraman. But at the end of the day, I think CH bounces back big up against the Buffalo Bills in what should be a very exciting tit-for-tat high-scoring affair. James Cook is... He's looking better, but I still don't feel comfortable starting him. Isaiah Pacheco, Jack McKinnon, they're also going to be involved on this Chiefs team, which sucks for Edwards Hilaire, but I still really do think Edwards Hilaire is the guy. Next up, we move to a matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia on Sunday night football. Miles Sanders is the only start-worthy running back in this game. Miles Sanders, another player that I was just wrong on for years. I've bet against Miles Sanders for years. I've been anti-Miles Sanders. And the touchdown luck went the opposite. He scored zero touchdowns last year. This year is like a million touchdowns. So it is what it is, right? A blind squirrel finds its nut every once in a while. Miles Sanders is better than I thought he was. So I'll give him credit. Round of applause for Mr. Miles Sanders. I'm going to be wrong about some players. Everyone is. I'm going to be right about some players as well. I was right about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Wasn't so right about Miles Sanders, but it is what it is. 
Um, I'm not just going to continue to hold this same notion from the offseason and hold strong on, oh my God, Miles Sanders sucks. Like, we've all seen the fucking tape. We've been watching the games. The Eagles look like one of the best teams in the NFL. Sorry, I just slapped my table. Probably made a loud noise. I apologize. But Miles Sanders is looking good. So I'm going to start him. That's just how things go. Ezekiel Elliott, another one of these fuckers that just runs in quicksand. Trap down. It's unbelievable. But yet, that fat bastard, that Kool-Aid man-looking head coach, Mike McCarthy, still wants to play with him. Jerry Jones still likes him. It should be Tony Pollard season. Every time you see Tony Pollard get the ball, it's like, wow, that's what a running back in the NFL looks like. That's what a starting running back looks like. But he's not the starter. He's on the bench while they let fat Zeke go out there and play. Zeke just doesn't have it anymore, if I'm being honest with you. Nothing wrong with the guy. He was great fantasy running back for years. But it's time to play the taps and let him down easy. Kenneth Gainwell is going to be a sit for me because Miles Sanders really is that guy. Final game here, Monday night. Football between the Broncos at the Chargers. Ah, uh, If you can see, uh, now uh, some people listen on podcasts, I was shaking my head aggressively. This game pisses me off. I literally don't understand how the NFL could do this to us. Now I know, Nick, before the season, they thought that the Broncos would be great. You also thought the Broncos would be great, and I would second that and say, yes, I did. But man, oh man, they need to let games be flexed earlier on in the season. This game sucks fucking cock. I do not want to watch this. I don't want to watch this, but I'm going to. I watch every game. I watch every single game. It doesn't matter what time it's at. I'll wake up at fucking 9 a.m. to watch some London game. I'll watch these garbage football games. I'll watch the Commanders versus the Bears, and I won't miss a fucking snap because I love football. But this is a crime against humanity. The Denver Broncos at the L.A. Chargers is a fucking crime that we should see. What the, what's the commissioner's name again? Ah, oh, shit, off the top of my head. Uh, Goodell. Roger Goodell. That bastard should be put in prison for what this is about to be. Melvin Gordon is a start. They've got Mike Boone. They've got Latavius Murray. Melvin Gordon has fumbling issues. But until I see the guard shift from Gordon to Mike Boone or to Latavius Murray, I'm just going to have to keep going with Melvin Gordon. And the Chargers' run defense has been no bueno, not very good at all. Austin Eckler starts the season off slow, incredibly slow. He's kind of whittling away. And then, bang! He starts playing really good. Sorry for screaming. Sorry about that. It probably hurt your ears. I'm sorry. Uh, it sucked that I couldn't give a turn your volume down. The Las Vegas Raiders in this video because they're on by, but I'll give it to you. There's one guy who always timestamps, or gal, I don't remember what their name is, that always timestamps my Las Vegas Raiders yell, which I love. So I love hearing that. So shout out to you. Chef's kiss for you. Beautiful. Um, back into things, though. Eckler was a snoozer, like Snorlax. Now he's great. Love Austin Eckler. I've always loved Austin Eckler. He's been my guy. I've been touting this guy for years. I love Austin Eckler. Um, I'm sitting down Joshua Kelly, that bastard, taking up some touches from Eckler, but it is what it is. That's what the team wants to do now. Mike Boone and these other Broncos running backs are going to be sits until they tell me otherwise. And please, please, for the love of everyone, Russell Wilson, wake up in this game. The guy just got like a procedure done or something on his arm. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, sc shaggy uh, scoobs. <laughs> This doesn't sound too good. This doesn't sound good at all. No bueno. But hey, we're all still going to watch it. You know. You know, despite how much you hate it, you're still going to watch this shit. You watch me talk for 30 plus. You probably watch, if you watch both videos, which you should. I should check out the wide receiver video. You probably hear me talk for like an hour plus every day. You're going to watch this game. You know you will. So thank you for watching. I love you guys all so much, genuinely, from deep down in the bottom of my heart. I love all you guys so much. Um... Without you guys, this doesn't exist. So, it's not just me. You guys help grow the channel. Liking the video, subscribing, commenting, all that shit helps me out a ton. Um, I genuinely do love you guys, so I hope you guys always remember that. Thank you guys for everything. I hope you guys have a great rest of your guys' day. Hope you have a nice night tonight. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. You'll be getting hit with the quarterback and tight end video. Start sit. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, hit that outro. Good boy!